Morning everybody, it's Lucy Clark from Mind Food again. Uh, welcome to another Growing Wellbeing session. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about wellbeing planning, which sounds pretty, uh, pretty impossible really. In fact, if it's that simple to just plan your wellbeing, why doesn't everybody do it? Um, and that's something we're going to talk about really. And, and unfortunately, it's rather tricky because the people that are most likely to benefit from wellbeing planning are on a sort of frazzled autopilot. Um, and I know this feeling really well, so uh, let me know if this rings a bell. It's like being on a bicycle going downhill with the pedals going so fast that you can't get your feet back on them uh, to be able to sort of uh, control the, the bike. And, and planning your well-being is going to be a little bit like being able to put your feet back on the pedals. So uh, so it's definitely worth a go. So before we get on with that, we're going to have a, a little uh, recap of what we um, looked at over the last couple of weeks. So in week one, we looked at checking in on how you're feeling three times a day just to see if there's anything uh, to work with there. And that's all about noticing. Um, and so uh, that's the first step away from this um, autopilot kind of uh, being dragged through the day, really. Then we offered... Um, some exercises uh, that are um, designed to help you bring you back bring yourself back to now so we looked at the senses one two three exercise that was all about uh, drawing on your senses to ground you back in the present um, and to stop scratch record thinking um, and we also looked at the five ways to well-being so there are five things that um, everybody needs to incorporate into their day to help with their well-being so they were taking notice connecting being active, keeping on learning and giving. And then in week two, we looked at mindfulness and that was all about uh, brain training. Um, and so that was about, uh, we talked about the amygdala, which is part of your brain that's like the home of stress autopilot. Um, and mindfulness practice is um, it's like a workout for your prefrontal cortex. So that's the uh, decision-making part of your brain. It's the part of your brain that says, stand down, there's nothing to see here. It might have felt like an emergency, but actually it's all going to be okay. So it's working out that part of your um, brain and it, what it means is that with practice uh, you'll be able to for example um, look at your own thoughts without getting carried away by them so essentially getting your feet back on the pedals again so this week um, we're going to bring all of this thinking together and we're going to look at a very simple but revealing exercise Ooh, <laughs> a bit blowy. Um, and uh, we're going to um, jot down um, all of your activities, if you write down all of the activities that you do during the day, and you're going to have a little think about whether you find them uh, nourishing or depleting. So um, it's not really a matter necessarily of what makes you feel better or worse. So for example, introverts might find that they um, do love uh, catching up with friends, but maybe big gatherings, even virtual ones, can be quite a drain uh, and they might need to find some uh, peace and quiet to recharge. Um, so, yeah, normally at this point we would uh, have a look at our lists in, in, a, in a growing wellbeing session. We'd have a look at our lists and we'd get people to contribute uh, what their two most depleting things in their day are and uh, what their most uh, two most nourishing things are. And so I'll give you an idea of the sorts of things that generally come up. So uh, popular in the depleting camp, we have uh, public transport, mostly tube over the bus, funny enough. Um, chores, very depleting. Spending too much time on the internet or watching the news. Um, and then in terms of what's nourishing for people, it can be taking time out for a quiet cup of tea. It could be making your own favorite sandwich. Um, it could be listening to music or reading. Um, or it could be chatting to a friend or going for a walk. Um, contentious ones that keep coming up are cleaning and tidying. So if you're finding cleaning and tidying nourishing, it's because you're feeling like you're recovering a sense of order um, and uh, regaining some control around you. The people that find it very depleting are the people that feel um, that it's a 
you know, thankless, never-ending task. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, uh, either's right, both are right really. Uh, the other one is that keeps coming up is cooking. So uh, some people find that uh, it's nourishing for them to do the cooking if they really feel that they're looking after themselves and their family. The people that find it very depleting are the people that are thinking, oh my God, I never signed up for this in the first place. I can't believe it's my turn again. So, and it, it all basically boils down to um, uh, nourishing things tend to be the things that you want to do and um, depleting things tend to be the things that you have to do. And we all know that there are loads of things that we don't want to do that we just can't get out of. So this is where looking at your day to see how you can uh, redress the balance um, uh, can really help. So um, if you're finding that you're doing something super depleting, you want to try and think of something nourishing to do um, before and after it, uh, almost like a little self-care reward. Um, so how could you introduce more well-being into your uh, activities into your day? Well, a good place to start is the five ways to well-being. And when we talked about some of the nourishing things, uh, you may have noticed that a lot of them already fit into that camp. So. Um, chatting with a friend is connecting, going for a walk is being active, um, reading is quite mindful um, and therefore one of your taking notice moments um, and, and really generally you want to be incorporating more of these things into your day just so that you can feel like you're ending the day on, on a win really. Um, you're you're recovering, uh, recovering a sense of control and that's really um, so good for you. It's you shouldn't feel guilty about in trying to incorporate more enjoyable things into your day. It's really about self-care and giving yourself what you really need. Um, and sometimes motivation can be a problem. Um, and you know sometimes you you just can't. You know you, there might be something that you really know ought to make you feel better, something that you've enjoyed in the past or. Um, would enjoy on other days but you just don't feel like doing it and and in those instances I'd say it's worth just getting started and quite often you'll be able to bring yourself round um, it's basically your mind pay playing tricks on you so you watch that um, so yes this is me signing off now um, giving you license to incorporate more enjoyable things into your day and remember it's all about self-care you deserve it you're worth it um, so just do it um, and as ever uh, if you've enjoyed this video if you could like love or follow us wherever you find us and if you could share um, this with anybody you feel may benefit thanks so much bye